Welcome back. We're here for game two of the Dota 2 Canada Cup. Arctic versus Molotov Esports. And in game one, we saw Molotov Esports come out with a victory over Arctic. It didn't feel too convincing, but it was a victory nonetheless. Both teams had opportunities there for sure. And Molotov just cashed in at the right time and were able to net the actual W. And that means that they'll be going into game two, one game up over Arctic with an opportunity to close the series out here. Meanwhile, Arctic need to respond and find a victory to take this to a third game to have any opportunity to keep their chance at the $750 prize pool presented by Dota2.ca alive. And Arctic, if they do get dispatched here in the first round of playoffs, that would certainly be disappointing for them and a lot of their fans. So we're going to see bands here. Molotov Esports have banned out Lone Druid as well as Treant. Arctic take out Wisp and Batrider. So a couple of bands from either side that are pretty standard. Molotov once again get that life story. This is a hero every single game they've had a lot of success with. Klotz has been an amazing life saver player through and through, and that showed last game with his dominance. Over 15 kills throughout the entirety of the game, was able to dismantle a lot of these weaker heroes, a lot of the supports on the side of Arctic, and even the carries in some situations. So I'm a little bit cautious. I mean, I'm a little bit curious why he wasn't banned out. It's just, I mean, life has been their go-to. But this game, Arctic decides to go a little bit different with their bans. This is the first time in the Dota 2 Canada Cup that Arctic has not banned out OD. So I don't know if this means we're going to see an OD from them, if we're going to see an OD from their opponent. But maybe a little bit of a change of pace here. Maybe a realization that this is this is it. This is it. We're all in. Arctic are going to pick up Shadow Demon and Nature's Prophet. Puck is going to be added to the Life Stealer. So Molotov are going heavy on their core heroes. They have a Puck. They have a Life Stealer. Meanwhile, Arctic are going to pick up a Shadow Demon and Nature's Prophet, so they have a support and utility, uh, potentially an offlaner, or could end up in the jungle if he wants to. We also see a couple more bands flying out here. It looks like Nagasaren taken out from Molotov. Arctic take out Darkseer as well as Nyx Assassin. We're waiting on the fourth and final band of this phase for Molotov. Uh, no complaints of any of these bands. Of course, we haven't seen Nagasaren yet today out of the one game we watched, but definitely worthy of a ban that is a powerful hero that is making a resurgence and certainly can turn the tides of games no pun intended weaver is going to be the second ban in the second phase for molotov as we've seen what smash can do with a weaver it is dirty and you don't want to put that hero in his hands give him an opportunity to replicate that performance that he had even ewo as well as a couple of the other players in arctic are well versed with weaver it's just a solid ban overall so I like that ban out from Molotov. They clearly did their homework. Arctic are sitting here on the third pick. What do they want to add to the Prophet as well as the Shadow Demon? Uh, Shadow Demon, amazing support. Prophet, great utility hero. We saw Molotov really favor the Prophet as well. A lot of teams have been banning out this uh, Prophet pick so that just for this pure reason that they can't have the global presence, it won route the game against Arctic the other day. It was a big issue for them. They couldn't cope with. So we'll see Arctic are going to add a Templar Assassin to their roster. Going to have that TA middle. Of course, the damage output from TA is formidable if you can get going early. And it can lean decently against the puck. It's not the ideal matchup, but should be able to get a CS. Meanwhile, Molotov are going to pick up the Visage, a great support hero, and is going to allow for a really aggressive lane if they want to go all in on this aggressive tri lane potentially. It's a really solid pick. I love this. Just having those familiars in the middle of those team fights. The extra stuns is going to slow down. Nature's Prophet is going to hurt Templar Assassin significantly. You have a lot of things that are going to pile onto the refraction between the auto attacks. Even when the Visage familiar damage is down, the attacks are still going to tick off a lot of those shells from refraction. So they're going to be able to cope with that pretty effectively. And now we're looking for a fourth pick from Arctic. What do they want to add to the TA and Shadow Demon? They go with Chen. This is starting to have the workings of an alliance lineup with the Chen, Shadow Demon, and whatever they're going to pick up as a carry in the tri lane. Nature's Prophet has an off laner. Templar Assassin has a middle. It's looking very solid right now. Meanwhile, on the flip side, Molotov Esports, Live Stealer, Puck, Visage, and now they add an Enigma. So they decide to pick up their own really strong jungler or offlaner. Enigma, since that buff, has been so solid. I really do enjoy the hero. I think it was a good change. Uh, that level 1 Malefice is significant now. So uh, props to Valve, or props to Ice Frog for figuring that one out. Yeah. Radiant team pick. 
And we'll also see a couple more bands fly out here. Alchemist is going to be taken out. And Venomancer is going to be taken out. Venomancer being the a little bit curious band. I'm not exactly sure why they decided to ban him out. Since he is not picked all too often. I, I guess the slows would really pile up. Unless there was a hero that can feed off of the slows effectively. I want to thank everyone that's watching. Of course, I'm M.Y. John. This is the Dota 2 Canada Cup brought to you by Dota2.ca. $750 prize pool on the line. Thanks to their gracious setup. And of course, this is Arctic versus Molotov Esports Game 2. Molotov looked to close this out and eliminate Arctic, one of the favorites from the tournament. Arctic looked to respond and turn this into a three-game series. Which team can get the better of it? The final picks from either side. We have Arctic going with PA as that carry. And this... <laughs> screams alliance and molotov go with bounty hunter uh, bounty hunter i don't know if it's just south america that really favors him but they're pressing really hard to get bounty hunter back as a core part of the game i don't know if i'm seeing it yet and my mouse is glitched this is not bueno so let's try and get a pause for me momentarily maybe and fix this because I can't click on anything in the game of course I can only drag click which would be really frustrating if I had to do it for the whole game I can't even see the X button so how am I gonna get out of here okay sorry about that I'm gonna have to fix my in-game Hopefully, it comes back up right off, and I don't have too many issues. Sometimes, Expert likes to be an annoying program. Other times, it cooperates. Well, but bear with me for a moment. That has happened to me before, where you just lose your mousing game, and it is absolutely infuriating. And I hate to stop the game for it, but... It would have definitely hindered my ability to cast, so we'll resolve that issue quickly and now move on. So getting back into the game, it should be fine. So sorry for the silence, just explaining myself because I feel bad about having that pause come out. But we're back into the game, so we have Molotov on the dire side. Go over who's playing what. Yuka is on the puck. Meanwhile, we have Baga on the Enigma. That means Chavo will be playing the Bounty Hunter. They're going to have a better game than last time around. Deeks is on Visage, and Klotz will be playing Lifestealer. Meanwhile, on the Radiant team, we have Belial, who someone said in chat is probably Ewo. I didn't put one, two and two together last game, but probably is. I'm going to still call him Belial. He's listed as that. I like to go by the book. Misko is going to be playing Shadow Demon. We have Masuko playing Chen, Smash on Templar Assassin, and Mihawk on Nature's Prophet. It looks like Nature's Prophet is going to be up against the Trilane, so they decide not to take this aggressive because they have the Enigma jungler, of course. Enigma previously not in a good aggressive jungler. Now a little bit better, but still not particularly good, especially relative to a Chen. So both teams are going to play us a little bit more passive, going to try and get their carries to get some farm. A bank on their middle hero doing pretty well in that matchup. 
and their tri lane just going very well. We do see Tavo popping off the invis. There are going to be sentries in play, so he has to be a little bit careful, but these two heroes alone are going to have a tough time really finishing off Bounty Hunter. It's going to require Chen to come in to generate some real kill opportunities, and you can see he has even more sentries on him right now, so he'll be able to eventually create those kills. Meanwhile, top lane, it's pretty much a similar circumstance. Nature's Prophet's not going to be able to pop his head in very far here. He does have trees. The trees are being a little bit frustrating, uh, going into the jungle and poking the head where they shouldn't be. But he's not going to be able to fall back onto farm in his own woods, which would have gave him a, a decent uh, start at the very least. He's instead going to have to just try and bear and grin the fact that he's top lane, pick up whatever experience he can without getting too uh, far away from his own tower, and uh, just hope this really goes well. I mean, this is kind of like the cross your fingers and hope you don't die build. But, of course, having that Chen in the jungle, they don't want to split that farm. Chen needs to have a good start since they are going three versus one. So you want to maximize your farming. And you don't want to... Enigma is a fast, fast jungle farmer. So, of course, he's going to be an issue as well. We do have a dive on the top lane. They're going on top of Mihawk already. And here we see they're going to go ahead and use the Grave Chill. So Grave Chill slowing down Mihawk significantly. Klaus getting the auto attacks off. But do they have enough damage? Mihawk juking the wrong way. If he had gone straight back into his tower, he might have survived. But now he's pinched himself into the corner. And Klaus and Deeks are kind of forced to stay here. But they're looking to back up a little bit. Deeks is going to continue in. He actually uses his soul assumption that didn't have much damage on. Deeks is going to die for first blood. Wow. What a turnaround from Arctic. That was... If Klotz had stayed, they could have gotten that kill on Mihawk. Instead, Klotz abandons, and they give up first blood to a long lane Nature's Prophet. This is worst case scenario for Molotov early on in this game. Bottom lane, we see Tavo. He's picking up experience. He's level 3. So I mentioned he's going to be relatively safe until Chen can rotate in. Chen has found a Dark Troll Warlord. The Dark Troll Warlord is going to try and solo the other Dark Troll Warlord. Or stack it, excuse me. But it did look uh, a little bit confusing for a moment there. But uh, that's going to definitely help them get some of those kills. So expect to see that troll rotate over, get into the lane, and then Tavo may be in a little bit of trouble. But he is picking up a good amount of experience here. The first blood going the way of Nature's Prophet is going to set him off right early on. He picks up a Bassy, which is going to be nice. And we'll see if he can continue to get lucky on that top lane. Middle lane, Smash is invisible. Jumps on top of Yuxa. Yuxa in a lot of trouble. He's actually going to go down here. Smash picking up a kill onto Yuka. A, a Templar Assassin killing Puck in the middle lane. That's virtually unheard of. Uh, just a really good play. And it looks like Yuka wasn't paying very much attention. Maybe tinkering with the, the crow or something. It just didn't feel like he was really focused. That's a death that you cannot really have happen to you because now Templar Assassin is getting confident. If he picks up those levels, he can really start hurting Puck with the extra levels in Psionic Blade, having extra damage from Refraction. Uh, this lane, which should be in favor of Puck, starts shifting ever so slightly. And thank you to chat for confirming it is Ewo as Belial. And Deeks continues to try and farm over here. Picking up whatever experience you can. I love this coming in. It's actually using the Treants to tank this to an extent, which is very clever play. The Treants were trying to contest it, but whatever. If they're going to take damage, he's content with that. Bag is going to continue to farm the jungle. He has picked up his Soul Ring. Also has 400 gold in the bank. Meanwhile, Smash in the middle lane is going to go on top of Yuka. Yuka once again in a little bit of trouble. Smash is pretty fast here. He's going to try and finish him off. Yuka getting so low. He's going to pop off his face and be able to bottle up a little bit as well. He's going to turn around though. And now Smash is in trouble. The auto attacks from the tower are going to be able to get him. And Puck gets the kill. So we've seen two misplays from either team now. And Yuka looked like he was going to go down there. Ends up netting a kill onto Templar Assassin because of his good friend, the Tier 1 Tower. Meanwhile, top lane Mihawk's just going to TP out. There's nothing to interrupt his TP, so he can always threaten that unless Enigma makes his way towards the lane. But Enigma is in a farming war right now. He just wants to make sure he outfarms this Chen. So let's bring up our graphs and see exactly where they stand. It looks like Enigma is ahead. He is a faster farmer. I mentioned that. And Chen has fallen behind a little bit, but he finds another troll. So, oh, happy day if you're a fan of Arctic. Getting those trolls means that Tavo is going to be in a little bit more trouble down here. Maybe they'll try and rotate over soon now. Top lane, though, they're jumping on top of Mihawk. Mihawk once again threatening the TP out. And this time he has to actually pull the trigger and leave the lane. Meanwhile, Belial, with his treads already picked up, is farming pretty well. You can see he's just a small bit behind 
the Nikes on the top lane. Uh, CS, he's only back by four. Top, we do see a dive. Klotz is going to go on top of Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet does not have a TP this time, as it is on cooldown, only level one. But Klotz is going to have to cease and desist as he gets in too deep. And we all know what happened last time around. Meanwhile, middle lane, Smash is going to dive on Puck again. This time, the tower is not going to be enough to take him down. So Puck having an awful time in middle lane. Yuka really struggling here. This is not a good sign. Uh, Templar Assassin, an extremely powerful early game hero. And if he can get some momentum going, Smash is going to have a field day working around the map. Uh, it's not going to be very fun for Molotov, especially some of these supports. And that being said, they do have a lot of things to work against Smash. Once those familiars are up, that's going to be huge. As well as if they can have Eidolon auto attacks piling on him. Malf is stunned to just stagger his movement. So they have a great deal of abilities that will work against him but we're still in the laning phase it's only seven minutes in and he has now killed puck twice the second time looking very convincing puck is at 21 cs so he's also beating puck in cs which is not too shocking since he does have high auto attack damage but puck's gonna have to do something to stabilize this lane bottom lane has turned into a 1v1 it looks like the supports are continuing to pull and get their levels shadow demon now level four so misko doing a good job there masuka level five almost six on chen we have Enigma level 6 with a black hole available. He's going to get spotted off as Treants get made uphill from Mihawk. So good play by him to maintain vision uphill Treants. And this is just level 5. So it looks like everyone's getting their levels. Now Tavo's going to rotate and find Masuka here. He's going to throw off a track. Masuka may be in a little bit of trouble, but with only level 2 in Janata Strike and Shuriken Toss, he should be able to casually walk out, and that's exactly what he will do. Middle lane gets pushed back to the tower again. Got to keep an eye on Yuka because you don't know how this is going to turn out, but uh, instead he's going to be fine this time. Smash decides not to dive. He does spend a lot of money, and it's going to be his treads completed up. So treads on Templar Assassin, one of the popular builds. Of course, you can go either way with that hero, really, and uh, treads probably going to indicate... Nothing too significant to us. We'll have to wait and see exactly how it goes. Now disruption on Klotz on the top lane. He gets stunned off by the Centaur and kept under the towers. This tower is close to dropping here. It's down to 142 health, but it is not in deny range. So uh, a good job up. Oh! The catapult ruined it. Catapult ruined everything for Molotov. Tower gets denied by Arctic. So that's not too bad for them. We see Belial is diving on Tavo. It's a quasi-dive. He's tracked up. Does have some sentries. Also opposite to pick up a Helm of Iron Will. So he will be going for that early. Ooh, coup de gras! And it looks like Belial considered for a moment continuing that. But this track is making Bounty Hunter pretty fast and hard to keep up with. It would have been interesting to see if he could have gotten the kill. I think he probably would have. But... Of course, potential of a response is too menacing for him to tempt it. Now Templar Assassin is going to find a double damage to add on to his strong early start. Bagra was looking for someone to black hole before, didn't find anyone, so now he's going to go ahead and work on finishing up that early mech, which will be a nice acquisition for him once he gets that. Tavo comes into middle lane invisible. We also have a TP coming in from the life sealer and they're all going to jump on top of smash mix taking a lot of damage here he turns around just mans up on tavo tavo getting really low but surviving nonetheless and now we see the hand of god come out to try and keep smash alive smash is still going to drop though but Valal blink strikes in it's going to be able to finish off the puck first and now will there be any further pursuit they'll will not it's going to end there one for one trade both solo middles going down puck and templar assassin suffering deaths but of course with the track in play that's going to be a favorable exchange for Molotov, especially since Puck, who is behind, is getting some of that extra gold, extra experience. He's going to try and bridge the gap a little bit there. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, we do see Templar Assassin making her way back down here after a good response. Helmet Dominator now completed, so maybe going to go for something like a BKB next. Since there is no Empower in this game, I kind of would be tempted to see something like a battle fury middle lane there's a dive by smash independently going to take down life stealer not sure how that happens but it did uh, smash is really e even when they take him down he just comes right back and responds so well it just shows what kind of player he is not afraid to be the aggressor in any of these situations and there was no response to help out life stealer either that was in pretty deep that kill going on around this point you can see the corpse yeah i'm spot on smash is going to go ahead and do work on this tower now tower's already below half health familiar's going to come in 
and think about trying to work at his refraction, but not going to do all too much. It looks like Deeks has lost one of his familiars, which is a shame, but he'll live. Courier's going to deliver out a completed mech to Enigma. So Enigma is just completely farm mode. If we compare the farm of Enigma and Chen, once again, we can see that Enigma is ahead of Chen. 3,200 to 2,200 by 1,000. So Enigma, a faster farmer, is making more out of this jungle time than Chen is. But Chen has picked up three really good creeps and three centaurs. So we're going to get to see some nice stuns come out if he's able to find a good engagement. And that could uh, actually prove frustrating to Baga if he gets stunned off by one of those centaurs to interrupt. It's going to be tough to do at melee range, but interrupt one of his black holes or something along those lines. Smash once again going to apply pressure to his mid-tower. We do see a rotation in three heroes on the side. They do walk over a trap. Cyanic Trap will spot off the first of the three, which was Yuka. So it's enough time for TA to get out of there. Now Tavo Invisible is going to come towards the middle lane. All five heroes around the middle lane for Molotov. Meanwhile, three heroes grouping down bottom. They're going to try and finish off this tower. That should be pretty easy for them. Smash is getting engaged on now. There's the familiar. The open wounds is there to slow him down even further. Klotz is on top of him with... The damage of Klotz is getting turned around on. He's going to go ahead and toggle his armlet to stay alive. Disruption is there now on Smash. Smash is going to get killed and will eventually drop. So another track kill. The tower does go down bottom meanwhile. And Misko's in a really bad spot now as he will die as well. So double kill for Tavo in the middle lane. They lose a tower in exchange, but not that bad of a trade for Molotov considering the amount of track gold they got out of that. We can see the gold graph going up and down and every which way. It's not really decisive in any direction quite yet, so we'll hold off on speculating through that. Meanwhile, bottom lane, everyone's rotating back down to secure this lane, but definitely Bounty Hunter getting a good chunk of money, so you know, 1,200 gold now after having not that many last hits in the laning phase. We're 13 minutes in, he has 40 last hits, so things didn't go particularly well for him down there, but he's responding well, getting those kills wherever he can. It's a 5-4 kill lead in favor of Arctic, Despite the fact it feels like Molotov have been a little bit more aggressive early on in the game. And that shows that Arctic has responded well to their aggression. And certainly Smash is a big reason why the kill lead is as close as it is. Or excuse me, why Arctic is ahead in the kill lead at that. And because of his aggressive plays, getting three of those kills, of course. But he is three of the deaths as well. So you live and die by the aggressor. Mihawk decides to pick up FaZe, something we don't see all too often on a Nature's Prophet at all. Misko, sitting on Boots, he's of course full support duty. Misuko has that completed mech up now, working on Boots next in all likelihood. Bounty Hunter Asks pick up a Bracer, and probably going to go towards Drums next. We saw the armlet in effect in the last team fight. Yuka, not much going on for him, he's really struggled early on here. Deeks, same can be said as a support role, not too many items there. Enigma has that mech as well as his boots and Belial on the bottom lane sitting on a lot of cash almost 3,000 gold maybe gonna turn that into a BKB maybe gonna turn it into a battle fury we don't know quite yet I'm curious to see the tower lead is even so there is no lead one to one Molotov have taken down one Arctic have taken down one as well smash going to continue to CS here pretty comfortably since he has <laughs> the support right behind him. Look at this. That would make me feel pretty safe. The Hand of God available. Disruption available. Why not go ahead and get your CS? Press forward. It's not that big of a risk. Now on the bottom lane though, we do see Belial get opened up on. They're going to deal up whatever damage he can. He's going to Blink Strike back to the wave. Puck not using the Dream Call yet. There it is. Dream Call is going to slow him down, but he's going to TP and will be able to make it out now since there isn't any further disruptions on the side of Molotov. middle lane still three versus three grouping here looks like they kind of want a black hole if they can get the familiars to catch a stun that should set up a pretty easy walk in black hole for enigma so expect perhaps visage to try and be the catalyst for this fight but instead it looks like arctic have dispersed a little bit they're going to scatter the smash is going to pick up a illusion rune in the river and get tracked off by tavo with the track speed you can see the familiars are catching up but uh, Templar Assassin has drums up now, so she is pretty fast in her own right. Bottom lane, Klotz is getting slowed down by Daemonic Purge. Belial is about to be on him. He's not opting to TP out, though, 
For whatever reason, he had Rage active and didn't TP. Instead, he's going to try and walk out of this one. No response coming from his team. Middle lane, we do see the towers being pushed, but no engage really. And there's the TP now. After disruption has been used, Yuka gets jumped on, and he gets blasted. Absolutely dismantled by Smash there. A kill actually going to Chen, and the Bounty Hunter gets a kill on Nature's Prophet somewhere in the midst of that. Not actually sure when Nature's Prophet... Ooh, Nature's Prophet all the way back by the base. So while our action was going on, Bounty Hunter picking up a solo kill. Much more effective Bounty Hunter this game than what we saw last game. So props to Tavo for a good rebound. Oh boy. My Dota TV thing reset again because I had to reset the client to fix my problem. Frustration. But <laughs> it's fixed now. Sorry anyone on Dota TV that was having trouble hearing me. For whatever reason, we're back into the game. Tower goes down the middle lane. Yuka TP's in. He has Dream Call. He's going to go on Smash. He catches only one. Smash is slowed down here. He gets hit by Disruption. Saved for a moment by Misko. Misko's going to throw down the Soul Catcher. going to turn around and be able to kill off Baga. And now Hand of God comes out. And this is a huge team fight for Arctic. They're able to take down two. Tavo trying to run out of here. Deeks is going to run out as well. The Familiars will slow them down. And that is a two for nil. Kill exchange. Smash somehow surviving. And now Claude's walking into a double damage smash. He infests into whatever he can. Has to be careful and he will survive as well, but walked into danger for certain. Tavo's still going to take some of these auto attacks and he's really playing a risky. Does get the track off, but the track's on a retreating Shadow Demon, so I'm not sure if that was with, worth taking that much damage. Templar Assassin decides to pick up the Yasha. So we talked yesterday a lot about how the Bursty build is preferable in some regards, but Yasha. I think it has some perks to it as well. He's now really quick. I would rather see him turn this Yasha into... Uh, excuse me, not turn this Yasha into a Manta until he has a Chrysalis, but that's just my preference. If he does get a Manta, of course, that's going to remove open wounds. It's going to remove Malefice and Track. So big abilities are going to be taken off of him, and you can definitely warrant that pickup because of those. Meanwhile, bottom lane... Lifestealer has those drums up. He has the armlet. 600 gold in the bank. So he's working towards his next item now, which may be an AC. I'm not exactly sure. We do see a smoke come up from a couple of heroes on the high ground. They're going to rotate down bottom where Klotz is actually baiting. This is a really aggressive bait. He's far away from his team, but it's going to work out for them. They're going to get the engage they want as the rotation comes in. Klotz gets hit here. Disruption is actually going to going to save him for a little while and now the black hole is going to catch two masuka and misko in the middle of it and both of the supports are going to drop without much of a contest at all but smash is now coming in from the back end that is going to turn around he's going to drop first one dead from molotov it's a three versus four now there's a second kill as visage is taken down by smash smash is dealing too much damage nobody's focusing on him now clots will finally get the focus on him and be able to finish off smash so templar assassin is dead two for three in favor of molotov right now but they're not done yet mihawk is being pursued we see top on top of him he throws down the track a couple more auto attacks will do the job and down he goes the Janata strike from bounty hunter enough to get that kill and it ends up being a four for two trade in favor of molotov and they get a tower on the back of it and bounty hunter lived throughout so there's a bunch of track gold for everybody i believe yeah i don't see any bounty hunter deaths here it was just enigma and visage got cleaned up by templar assassins so Tavo, phenomenal job staying alive, getting a lot of track gold for his team. If we look at the gold graph now, it's going to show us there was a lead for the Radiant. Now it is taking a nosedive down towards the Dire, and that's going to be largely because of that last fight. Just a huge swing in gold. The tower and probably two, three, I don't think four track kills, but probably around two or three. Tavo's sitting on 1,800 gold now, so he can work towards his next item. Uh, BKB wouldn't be that great, honestly. I, I think he'd be better suited going for a damage item. There's BKB will block what? It will take away the disruption possibility, Wrath of Nature, Holy Persuasion, or Test of Faith, excuse me, and maybe a dagger. It's just not worthwhile pickup for anyone on Molotov in this game, I don't believe. Uh, except maybe the Enigma, but uh, even then. I don't know. It doesn't look like it's the best item against this Arctic lineup. So if I were the Bounty Hunter, I'd want to go a little bit more aggressive. Maybe even go for a Deso next. 
Meanwhile, top lane Baga is going to get harassed a little bit back here by his tier 1 tower. The tier 1 is not that low. It's standing above half health. Glyph available. Klotz is walking in through the wrong side. He's going to take a lot of damage for doing so. But he'll make it back towards his tower. All five on hands for both teams. We'll see if the engage comes out here. Klotz gets jumped on. Blink strike from Belial. He gets open wounds, though, and that will be enough to slow him down from further pursuit. Mech is going to get popped. They turn around. A nice... Nice stream call. He's got to catch three in the middle of it. Nature's Prophet's going to be the first casualty of battle. Cloud's trying to back up here. Smash dealing a whole lot of damage. One more auto attack will do the job. And the blink strike from Belial will actually finish off Life Stealer. One for one trade as it stands. But from the back end of the fight, Tavo able to finish off the Shadow Demon. Now Smash going to get just well. Deeks sitting on top of a lot of damage with that Soul Assumption. He's just waiting for the shield to be taken down. Nope, Belial's going to get chain stunned by those familiars. Smash turning around, trying to kill off Baga here. Has to be careful. There's three heroes against one. And in fact, a fourth close by. Grave Chill is going to slow Smash down as they're looking to find any damage source they can. Tavo going to catch up to him. Maybe going to throw out another track. I don't think they can keep up with Smash, though. He's going to make his way out of that fight. But another good team fight for Molotov. They lose their carry in the Life Stealer, but they're able to get three kills, taking down the Phantom Assassin, the Nature's Prophet, and the Shadow Demon. So another lopsided trade. More track gold. And we keep looking at this gold graph. Just wants to nosedive further. Somehow this Radiant Cold Lead is still maintained, but I'm sure after the next fight is recorded, that's going to change. Let's take a look at our net worth. It's actually up already. We can see Phantom Assassin actually leading the way. She did opt to pick up the Battle Fury, which is going to accelerate her farm. It's a great farming catalyst. However, you can see in these team fights, she desperately needs that BKB, and that's what she's working towards the Nexus. She already has the Mithril Hammer. Is going to need about 1,000 plus 1,030 more gold, so 2,000 and change until she can finish up the entirety of the BKB. Templar Assassin, meanwhile, is sitting on 3,000 gold, so not sure what he wants to go for yet. Hasn't picked up any components. If he wants to finish the Manta, that option is available now. He also has a Lucian Rune in his bottle. Chen has that mech, not much going on outside of that. Nature's Prophet, really short on farm. He has Hand of Midas and a Shadow Amulet. He's just trying to work to get his invisibility, to be frank. Uh, now we do see the Manta now picked up on TA, so we did opt for that build. Interesting choice. Uh, I kind of like it. Kind of wish he had a little bit more damage. You can see how close he gets to finishing off the next Assassin in his first go-around, and I feel like the Chrysalis would put him over the edge a little bit, and that would be really crucial. If they can kill him on the first engage, then I think their team fight would be much better off. We're at the 23 and a half minute mark on Memo John. This is Arctic versus Molotov. Game two, Molotov up one game to none. If they win this, they move on and eliminate Arctic. If Arctic win, they force a game three. This is the Dota 2 Canada Cup brought to you by Dota2.ca. $750 prize pool on the line. Smash is going to get jumped on here. And once again, Smash playing it really, really wisely. He's just waiting for the dream call and then TPing out. These two heroes have no further interrupts. Bounty Hunter too far away to get a shuriken off. And he will escape with his life. Meanwhile, bottom lane is getting pushed out a little bit by Mihawk as well as Chen. They're going to back off as the rotation comes in from the Dire. And that's going to be that. Deeks is now going to go towards middle lane as well. Nothing going on here. Blink Dagger picked up on Enigma. Blink Dagger picked up on Puck. This is a really good timing for Molotov if they want to be aggressive uh, before the enemy team knows that those items are up. Smash does have a DD though, so uh, scratch that. Baga's going to walk into Smash here. He's going to find a Malphus Nun. No, he's like AFK walking into Smash. And that was really close to being a horrible mistake. Yuka is going to have to jump away top lane as he gets hit by Demonic Purge and a, a lot of stacks from the Shadow Poison. Smash is going to go back towards that tower. The tower is really low. Belial is going to work on it. He is going to be able to finish off his BKB now with that tower dead. So expect to see the Courier in 50 gold picking up a BKB. Meanwhile, Klotz on the bottom lane just continuing to farm away. He's going to be able to finish up his Sanjin Yasha. So that's going to be in play very soon once the Courier can get to him. And Klotz is already dealing a good amount of damage. Top lane, though, there's an engage. They're jumping on top of Tavo, and Tavo gets coup de grade hard by Belial. Misko disrupting himself to stay alive there, but you can see plenty of detection. Look at this, dropping two sentries down to find that bounty hunter. 
and definitely worthwhile as he's had a strong game once he broke out of the laning phase. Did opt to build Vlad's. So interesting choice there. Vlad's going to make his teammates stronger. Give an armor bonus, which is going to be crucial because all the damage coming out from Arctic is physical. We noted that before when discussing BKB and its potential utility, which is zero. So that is going to be nice to have that extra bonus on everybody. Belial continues to farm well. He now has that BKB on hand, which is a necessity if you're Arctic. It's not necessary if you're Molotov, but you see how that works. So now he's going to go ahead and there, jump on top of Klotz. Klotz is in trouble. He's trying to do work on Tomisko. He's looking for something to infest, but there's no creeps here. Only the mud golems. And now he could jump inside of Yuka if need be, and he will do that, but pop right out. Yuka had to use his Dream Call to slow down Belial. Belial gets healed by the hand of God. Klotz is being really aggressive, turning around, thinking about re-engaging. Valkyrie comes in for the side. He has a black hole available. Will he use it on the one hero? The BKB is used by Belial to stop the Malphite stun from continuing. And that's going to be a disengage as Klotz is going to back up and Belial will be fine. But you can see good responsiveness from Molotov. They're able to get over there quickly enough so that Klotz does not suffer a death. Mihawk has finished off his Shadow Blade, so that's in play as well now. It's going to help out his efforts trying to push away from his team. He is against a Bounty Hunter, so it's not the best item, but still the mobility it grants. And if he uses it wisely, it's going to be effective. Smash gets jumped on here. The Midnight Pulse is there. Maleficent is slowing him down. Track's going to catch on him as well. Yuka getting taken down really quickly by these <laughs> illusions. And the Smash goes around and one-shots a familiar. And that's a free goal for him, and he's going to make it out of there with a haste rune active, it looked like. But it's over now. Maybe not even haste. Maybe just active drums. He's built a really fast build. Thanks to everyone that's tuning in. I'm Emily John. This is Dota 2 Counter Cup brought to you by Dota2.ca. Arctic versus Molotov. Molotov up one game to none over Arctic. Arctic are on the verge of elimination. Now we do see Belial coming towards his own side of the map finally. So he's going to play it a little bit more cautious now. Smash, very aggressive. Pushed forward in the middle lane. Doesn't have any support behind him, but it doesn't look like Molotov want anything to do with him right now. Yuka heading towards the bottom lane. It's a 28-minute puck, and all he has is a Blink Dagger. He doesn't have money towards anything else, really. So it's a long way away from progressing further on that build, which is a shame. But Smash had a lot of control over that middle lane. He won the CS battle. As you can see in the CS chart, he won in terms of kills. And uh, it's a little bit curious. Puck tends to be a better middle laner uh, against TA. You're able to harass a lot. You're able to get your CS, but it did not work out well for Puck this time around. Smash played it exceptionally. So props to him. Once again, Smash a player, one of the most dynamic players we've seen uh, emerging in the past couple of months. He just takes over games. And we're looking at last hits right now. You can see 213, pretty even on both of these carries. If we look over to net worth, 15,000 on the PA, 12,000, almost 13,000 on the TA. And now a Nike's bomb out of the Bounty Hunter. Dirty play is going to kill Nature's Prophet. And he's had a rough showing this time around. Nature's Prophet, Mihawk, 1-4. and four. Not exactly where he wanted to be, but in his defense, not the easiest of circumstances, starting off in that long lane against a really strong death combo, but he did get a free first blood because of a misplay. So, that is something. Phantom Assassin now looking at 800 gold in her bank account. Next item probably going to be another damage item. I mean, if they play the farming game here, PA is going to be able to tear through a lot of these Molotov heroes. I know Lifesteal are strong, but the burstiness of a TA with the blank strike onto a hero. We're going to look at it now. Klotz is going to try and solo Belial here. He's taking a whole lot of damage, and there's a stun from the Basher that just came onto him, and Klotz is going to go down. The kill going to the Radiant, but nonetheless able to take down that life stealer. Belial is looking formidable right now as he's able to proc a couple of those coups de grace and take down life stealer. Thank you to Ewo for proving my point. Belial is Ewo. That's been confirmed by the chat. Appreciate that very much so as well. Tabo does come in. We see Bagger come in. They're both late. Uh, I wonder if we're going to see some of these heroes start building towards an MKB. Uh, I mean, it's pretty essential. 
it's becoming obvious that PA is a real threat. He's getting up there in the farm. He's topping the net worth, 16,000. That's 5,000 more than Lifestealer. Uh, it looks like Arctic is methodically pulling themselves into a lead here. Masuko is going to get hit by the Dream Coil and be taken down in the middle lane. Meanwhile, Enigma drops to the top lane to Templar Assassin. But that is a trade that if you're Arctic, you're okay with. Uh, Chen going down, sure, it's a shame, but they don't have a black hole now for 36 seconds. Great chance for Arctic to try and break through, pick off another tower, maybe even go to Roast. They have tons of damage. Here we go. Puck's in trouble. He's going to have to blink out of this, and he is blinking, but a short distance blink. It's going to get him killed. He could have blinked back into the trees. He could have blinked the full range. Another misplay coming out from the hands of Yuka gets him taken down. Now Smash does have that Chrysalis and 3,300 gold in the bank. So he's close. 500, 400 gold away from finishing off the entirety of a Daedalus. So we were talking about how hard the PA hits. But now we have to take into account the fact that TA is going to hit significantly hard as well. And this is the Roche I was anticipating. Medallion is used on Roshan. The minus armor from that and Meld Strike is going to make it go down rather quickly with only two heroes here and a handful of centaurs. But this is a, a really free Roshan for Arctic. And Aegis is now in play on Smash. Smash almost gets a kill on both of those familiars. That was rather close. He's actually going to camp it out and one-shot one of them. Here we go. Melt Strike. Peace. No, nope, doesn't even have to use Melt. Gets both of them. Woo! Giving away gold. Arctic is just feeding off of everything right now. Smash especially. Let's take a look at our kills, actually. Smash is 9 and 4. Blyle's 3 and 1. Smash has definitely been the top player on Arctic this game. Didn't have that great of a time last game, but rebounding emphatically. And now the Illusions. He's playing confidently alone. This could be an opportunity to pick him off. I would use a Black Hole to just kill Smash. I don't see why not. Midnight Pulse is there, and the Malif is stunned, but they're not going to actually do it. So... They didn't have Lifestealer with them, so it would have been a little bit more difficult to actually get the kill, which makes sense. And now Klotz is just going to continue to farm, but he's not farming at a faster rate than this PA. We talked about that pickup going for that Battle Fury. It's a little bit greedy, but it's a farming-oriented build, and PA has made the most of that. Now middle lane, Psionic Trap is going to pop. Deke's taking a lot of damage. He's going to get crit, but he'll still survive just barely. Smash is going to get focused down by Klotz here. He gets hit by Disruption and will be saved for the moment, but still has an Aegis. Pops off a Refraction and will get forced out away from the fight, so he's still alive. Black Hole only hits Chen. A horrible blunder from that guy, and he gets silenced afterwards as well. Belial in the middle of the fight is going to take down two. He's able to kill both Enigma and the Visage and now Bounty Hunter is dead as well Yuka TP's back into the fight Belial just putting autos on him he's going to have to blink away Yuka once again with not a full distance blink but he'll be fine this time and now Klotz is going on top of Smash Smash still has the Aegis but it doesn't matter he won't need it turns around and Nature's Prophet will get the killing blow on Life Stealer as Arctic are working to this Rax as GG is called from Klotz that's the end of it. Arctic are going to even out the series. It's one to one. Molotov and Arctic are going to go to a game three to decide the winner who will advance in the Dota 2 Canada Cup. What a crazy finish. The amount of damage coming out from Arctic is absurd. And you could see that in that last team fight, and it was just too much for Molotov. They had to concede. I want to thank everyone that tuned in. Of course, I'm MY John. Uh, thank everyone that's watching in-game as well. If you are not watching in-game, if you're watching on stream, be sure to head over to the Dota 2 store and purchase a ticket for only $1. It supports Dota2.ca and allows them to continue to run events like this. Smash took over this game. We'll see if he can do the same in Game 3 or if Molotov are going to have an answer for the hyper-aggressive play of his Templar Assassin. And we talked about how good Klotz has been on Lifestealer throughout the tournament. Not so much this game, only 3, 5, and 7. He had a good farm. Rest of his team, a bounty hunter, played pretty well, I'd say. But Puck, falling behind early and too far to respond. Enigma didn't really maximize his usefulness, not getting those big black holes that you need an Enigma to get. 
and Visage, uh, what more could you ask of him? He did his job for the most part, but definitely Molotov coming short. Dominant performance from Arctic, so we'll head over to game three in a moment and decide who's going to win this series. I'm Emma John. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Emma John TV. Also follow me on this Twitch channel you're watching for more Dota 2 Canada Cup action. We have the next game coming up shortly.